the BMW. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. can't. The GS, I think so. Def, and AD, G, GS defines an ADO. ADB is the definition of what the GS is. So, Sherman, we actually forgot one more ADB, the so called ADB, the Honda X200, which I don't know, it, it's, it's, it's a um, Hornet with an ADB look, and that's about it. It's nothing more than that. And they wanted to put an effort to retune the suspension. At least retune the suspension. At least retune the suspension, what the Kawasaki has done with the Versus 650. Or even the 300. The 300 was a proper ADB, we are not going to cover that, but that was just a small lifespan in India. It was exorbitantly priced. It a brilliant priced. bike at an exorbitant price. And exorbitant when price. things don't match, this is the result. It was just a lakh, lakh and a half lower than the 650. When is by the 650 versus instead of 300. But again, that's something that we will not cover. Otherwise, it will take forever. So yeah, I mean, what was Honda thinking? It was, it's not even a 200cc engine, it's 188cc. They The only thing they've done is they've given a bash plate and they've given button tires. That's about it. So it it is it is it is again it's a confused bike but it's Honda so it will sell at least and uh, they have done the same they've not done the same though actually the Honda X five hundred is a proper EDV no it's a proper GT with a off road capable engine and off road capable suspension but the price dude. no no the problem is abroad it is as cheap or cheaper. Then the KTM 390. Can I just believe it? I'm you buy three KTM for the same price. No, no, no. Here you can buy. I, 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 sorry. No, over here you can buy two KTM 390s and have six thousand rupees in uh, spare to fill both the KTM. And he said he was bad at math. He did his math right this time. No, no. I had made a video about this before. So I've done the calculation that time. So something that should be priced at half the rate is priced twice as much. Obviously, it's not going to work. And the most embarrassing part is when you see these videos abroad where these uh, foreign journalists actually compare the 390 with the X500, few of them prefer the X500 but few of them prefer the KTM 390 as well. So because of the electronics package, the Honda X500 just doesn't have it's pretty the electronics package. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a basic bike. It should have been priced at 3 lakhs, 3 and a half. Actually, the X500 makes the Benelli TRK500X look better. Because a Benelli TRK 500X is actually fifty thousand rupees cheaper than the X 500. And it is. And they have they have. It they have the whole nine they have over the there. Nice big tank. Proper spoke, wheel, spoke wheels. Spoke wheels. Nineteen inch. Spoke wheels. Proper suspension. And so about the forty two mm thick uh, suspension. About a forty four or forty five mm thick suspension. It's like heavy duty suspension. It's got the exhaust on the top. It's uh, the the what do you call the. Luggage carrier is standard. They've gone the whole nine years. I think the only thing. drawback for that bike would be Benelli as the brand. And no, no, there are many. Drawbacks. Otherwise, the I think main. the bike. It is actually heavier than the GS1250. So, yeah, the weight is a major, major factor to be considered. Quite a few people there, yeah, just look over the weight. But if you're going to use this bike for its purpose of cross country or actually purpose of off roading, weight matters. Weight really matters when you when you want to flick the bike left, right, you want to do a three and a a one eighty or something, you bloody it's like a it's it's heavy man. You can't push that bike around. And so I think weight is the only drawback. Benelli by default is a drawback for all its brand. I'm talking with reference to the service, also with reference to I personally haven't felt nice walking into the showroom because they treat themselves as they're the only premium players, but that's subjective from Showroom to showroom around India, but if you ask me a Benelli or a Honda, I personally go with the Benelli. Even though the Honda will be far more reliable, the Benelli sounds good. Look at the exhaust sound, stock exhaust sound. It sounds so amazing, man. It yes. is that good, and yeah. also the tractability of this engine is really good. You can really, I've read it the five hundred of of five zero two X. You can. Go around in city speeds on fifth gear as well. Not an issue. Uh, it's not throttle. It is quite smooth and. It is smooth. It's got the lower torque below. It is not as quick responsive as the versus, but obviously versus one and a half lakh rupees more. more. But you can really. You don't need to use the clutch. Versus also has a 
17 inch uh, which is more like a grand tour as you are versus know. is a grand tour it doesn't come in the ET market can. it is a it is a bike that does it all as simple as that it, it's it's got the performance of a ninja because it's got a ninja's engine which is retuned it's got road bias tires so you can catch up with your friends you can lean in on corners lean like a regular corner. bike and 99% of your life when you're going to use the bike on the road it that road that bike is usable then one percent of your life when you're going to go bloody off road you're like are you are button tires nahi hai you can't bloody have it all right but speaking of that a bike that did have it all and then they managed to screw it up uh-huh. was the beastrom the beastrom the beastrom was 80000 rupees more it had everything the versus had and that little bit more with the tubeless spokes tubeless spokes yes and the big screen the tag and everything and I don't know what got into Suzuki, and they're like, you know what? Just in, just let's just increase the price. Let's see what people do. And, and the market just fell. Like I personally have seen one or two V-Storms, but I haven't seen so many V-Storms as opposed to the Versus. Because when I was there for some time with Kawasaki and Suzuki, ah, you mean with Suzuki? Yeah. yeah. So and when the V-Storm launched, it I mean it made all the sense at eighty seventy to eighty thousand rupees more. Yeah. The rims itself would cost a lakh or lakh and a half to get tubeless yeah. rims. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. the proper uh, off-road suspension and the twin cylinder and that bike was just I don't know, it was lighter by three four kilos or similar weight with a sim- similar power and torque. But it but it had it all. It had it, had it all. And then then they just thought you know let's do a, let's do a typical Jap thing. Honda price the bike high, Kawasaki price a certain bike high. Suzuki said, "Hum kyu piche rahe?" We let's also to price it high, but then I feel that it just lost its market after that. I'm sure there will be one person like me in the marketing team like let's not screw it up. Let's just let's just price it at this rate. Let's just get quantity. No, no, let's just price it high. They cling it. They cling it. Anyways, we are earning with the 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 what you call the high boost is getting sold out left, right, center. This should also get sold out. It never happened. And sad, they are such nice bikes, and none of them, none of the other bikes. The Jixxer is not there. The seven fifty was nice, but very underrated. 750 that, that bike was lost was the 750 was nice but if i'm not mistaken it was priced 50000 rupees less than the z900 it, yeah. it it had come really close to the z900 but it was just uh, 70 to uh, not 70 around uh, uh, 15 bhp less which is was india mein na 900 cc 750 cc plus the z100 uh, z was what this was the four cylinder three cylinder this is four, four cylinder but it was heavier by almost 20 kilos. It was heavier, and if I'm investing that much amount, I would do research. And quite a few people had mentioned the Z900 overall package was better. But let's come back to the ATVs over here. Yeah. So, yeah, so uh, uh, the V Storm screwed it up. For, I mean, the marketing team screwed up a really capable machine, the V Storm. The uh, versus, obviously, it's the do it all. And it's, it's there and it's been there. And and Kawasaki's really theory is why if it's if it's perfect why I think they have not even upgraded the display if I'm not mistaken the I major displays have now the new 2022 I think they've changed the lights there's the new uh, move straight like the Ninja 400 Achha, the, they, they've, they've got that in the 650 also the I know they, they've got it in the 1000 I'm not sure of the 650 the new 2022 I think is coming with that Achha. will be coming with that and the new display which the Ninja 650 has the color display the new Achha. 2020 they, they're getting the so, same finally <laughs> finally finally and uh, I don't know. Moving up, we what we have the BMW XR, the they don't, the GS 850. The, the BMW GS 750 850 are no longer there. No longer there. And if I'm not mistaken, 750 850 are the same engine, right? They're the same engine. Just the same engine. I don't know why would you wait. Tell something. It's a 750 when it has a a much higher capacity engine. But forget about the BMW. But even Triumph are the same thing now. With the for example, you have the 900 GT, hmm. the 900 Rally and Rally Pro. Hmm. The 850 is actually the 900. It's just detuned. It's not a 850 cc or whatever. It's an ACM 900 engine, but detuned by 10 bhp. And I am like, okay, why, why, why are you guys doing that? I was not aware of that. So I that, always thought it's a 850 cc engine because I'm really not concentrated on the high end bikes, so I kind of concentrate on the no. bikes. So lines. now what these guys have done is so uh, abroad you had the Tiger 900, 900 GT Rally and Rally Pro, hmm. and so they wanted to get a more uh, like my variant. I have the XR, which is. <coughs> Very basic, there's mm. X, XR, XRX, XCX, XCA. Mm. So XR was very basic, just ABS, <coughs> uh, traction control and no riding modes and all that, no TFT display and all. So they wanted to get a model like that. So in turn, <coughs> so the 900 has been discontinued and they call it the 850, but it's the same engine. It's just the tuning, the power output is made less. And instead of 95 PS, it is uh, 850, uh, 85 PS. 
and they remove most of the electronic for the one or two riding modes the tft display and that's the whole bike is the same it doesn't have all the heated grips and bluetooth connectivity that makes sense stuff. right for people who want to afford yeah. a grand tour but my point was like even at my time i liked it because it was the same engine was the same and it was at par with all the other bikes okay some of the electronics and other which i'm mm. fine living with mm. and i'm honestly in the last 4 years never felt the need for it like we had a discussion that last time yes but here now i mean why have you re- my whole point with them was why have you reduced the power for the same your engine is the same just to show it's an if i'm not mistaken these bikes also uh, they's more than enough for india but still because it's same price you see it right i mean the older bike also the same right but yeah. they have the power power band the same again that we would never know but we actually haven't uh, spoken in that regarding the triumph 6 yes yeah, so that is 660 so right these guys have a good amount of the tiger 660 or 650 what is 660 it? sport it's a, it's a trident with the enhanced chassis and but much have, better suspension but they have they changed the suspension yes they yes. have changed yes. it suspension is different then it's then i think that is a do it all bike because the only thing and it sounds most, good like that's what i think the only thing the horses they not have is the exhaust i've ridden the trident i've seen the trident fly by it sounds good and the stock the stock sounds stock exhaust exactly so unlike those uh, benedetti exhausts there are few bikes that just sound loud even though they're not going fast i've seen the triumph uh, uh, the the 650 Trident. Only when this guy accelerates, you get that whoosh. And when he's re-accelerating, when he's just riding it normally, that whoosh sound is in there. So it doesn't irritate you. You can still listen to music while riding the bike. And whenever you want to feel that, okay, I'm, I have something between my legs, accelerate and yeah, so really. I'm, I'm really looking forward to the 660 Sport. That's there. And the best part is like we're talking about 10,000 kilometers service. This is good. I think it's, it's not ten thousand. It's sixteen thousand, which is a ten thousand miles. So no, exactly, my old tiger was ten thousand kilometers. The street old street tiger was ten thousand kilometers. So or one year, sixteen thousand kilometers. Or what else is in the game? Exactly, and this this shows how reliable these bloody engines are, right? These engines are so reliable. You have to maintain it once in sixteen thousand kilometers. Look at the Benelli's when you have to be six thousand. And and the funny and part is after. After they launched at three thousand, we earlier to say no, no, no. Earlier they launched at four thousand, if I'm not mistaken. And then they had a complaint from the customer: it's too expensive to maintain the Benelli. They didn't change anything. They're like, you know what? Abhi chhe hajar mein kar de. We have dropped the uh, the maintenance cost by twenty twenty five percent by just telling them service it later. What logic? Uh, but Triumph, obviously Triumph, being a British band owned by a British company, authentically British. So far, I think Triumph is one of the few companies that authentically their origin, right? Royal Enfield is not a British brand anymore; it's an Indian brand. Yes, he was always an Indian brand only. The Benelli is not an Italian brand; it's a Chinese brand. Uh, Kawasaki is Kawasaki, and it will always be Kawasaki. Ducati is Italian but owned by Germans. Uh, that should actually be a good thing. Hmm. It's it's a mix of design and engineering. Yeah, yeah. So coming back to the Triumph, I think uh, the 660 makes absolute sense. The pricing wise as well, uh, it's a light, small package. And the thing is, the thing that I've gone against the Triumph is it did not look big. It yeah. looked like a 350 cc bike. The Tiger 660 at least looks big. No, it looks so, like you're paying that worth. It looks like a big bike. Exactly. It looks like a big bike. It is small enough to, you know, take it through corners. Obviously, it's not a ATV. You can't. You can. You can take any bike off-roading, but uh, it's not like off-road biased, and uh, everyone knows that. Uh, Triumph is not trying to hide it by saying it's off-road. I don't know why they put it as a Tiger because Tiger is usually associated with proper off-road. With the ATV, but then, but then you have the Tiger GT versions also, which are road biased, but it can soak up your bumps. Another thing I did not like about the Triumph was the rear suspension was too hard. I think they will retune it for the Tiger, so I think it's going to be an overall amazing bike. Let's let's keep our fingers crossed. Obviously, the Tiger the Tiger is going to be overall really good. Even the even the other bike, the uh, the nine hundred Rally and GT have been very well. They sold out for a couple of months. Yeah. And uh, I rode them. And the good thing is, they're actually like getting the top end versions to India. Yeah. And Indians are actually uh, completely uh, blocking their fifty fifty units, whatever they are importing. And that's a good thing actually. They are at least showing trust in India. And not pricing like yeah, we'll get your high unit, and so you'll be charging accordingly. It's it's uh, in the price range. It's not like the Honda, uh, what do you call Africa Twin? No, but the Africa Twin also. Because speaking of Honda, 
I feel like I've done actually they have, the price is very decent. Like if, if a tiger a rally pro, which is a top end 900, mm-hmm. it's at uh, 18 almost 19 lakhs. The, the Africa Twin is 19 to 21, which is fine. You know, level net CC by. They've come, they've introduced the Africa Twin in what 13, 14 lakhs then before when they had just yeah. introduced it. But then that was a thousand CC now, that's a level. No, and then they've done a lot of changes to it. Yeah, yeah, it's, but it's, it's, it's if, uh, if, if Honda is able to place a 1100 CC bike with the 900s, I, I still can figure out all that they place a 500 CC bikes with their 650s. Oh. <laughs> so it's like, oh, we'll screw the lower ends, the top end, the rich, the rich guys can enjoy, the not so rich people can get screwed. Like. <laughs> I know, these should have prices at the TTM 390, slightly more because they are low cylinder. Hai. In India, obviously, two cylinders are worshipped. But whatever, coming back to the top end. And uh, even uh, the multi shot, the multi shot again is not, you'd look at it as a adventure, adventure bike. But when it comes to the road, oh my god, oh, that oh. bike is phenomenal. Absolutely. I, I, but it, then it, it, with comfort and with shitload of speed, that even puts up super bikes to shame. 140 was strong, right? It's, it's 140 plus, at least last time I did it, it was 140. That's a maniac, maniac of a week. So I personally haven't ridden it. I have not got the opportunity, but people who have ridden it, I actually met someone during the Kawasaki showroom launch in Thane. Okay. This guy owned the multi strata, I could see oil dripping below. And yeah, so yeah. he's this guy who has been complaining to Ducati continuously with no response. Uh, he had actually shown me a video where you could see the sparks coming out. In the sense, he's like, I'm. this is the worst decision ever. But the good thing is this guy was rich enough to just purchase another bike. People like us who will put literally a life saving in a Ducati and if we are one of the 1,000 or 10,000 or 1 lakh unfortunate customers, for us it's a disaster. It's like what the hell? So, I mean Ducati, it's reliable but uh, I would, if I am putting everything I have in a brand, if I had the option of having a fleet of the bikes, then Ducati would be one of it. One of it. But if I had like, I'm I'm a 9 to 5 guy, I took 5 years to convince my wife I need to buy a proper ADV, which that is does. 20 lakh rupees. I will go for a Honda, blindly. No two ways about it. I'll, I, I know it's going to be reliable. And plus it's gearless. It's like riding a gearless bike. It is so complicated. There, there, there are downsides to it, but people what, come to what, you and they are like, the Babe, how, what is this? And this is back end and you are still in, like, because it doesn't have a clutch, you don't realize. And it's like, oh. No idiot has come and just done this. Come on, everyone has the courtesy <laughs> of not doing this. Where but, India, but, but, but the advantage of this is, uh, when you are off-roading, there is no chance of you uh, the bike uh, locking up. Locking up, because you are not at the false gear. And false gear. No. You don't have the wrong RPM at the wrong speed. You are always at the right RPM at the right speed. Uh, it's got uh, a dual clutch transmission, seven speed. It just keeps on switching as per your uh, requirement. So, and it is more fuel efficient. Nowadays, by default, uh, automatic cars are, or bikes are fuel are efficient because they know efficient. they manage it pretty better than bikes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, so it, it, that old top converter technology, Jotha, is not there in these automatics anymore. Considering we started off with ADVs and let's end this topic on the grand idea of ADVs. The, the BMW. G- <laughs> you can't. The GS, I think so. Def- and AD, G- GS defines an ADV. ADV is the definition of what the GS is. You know, you, you've seen this. Uh, <laughs> if, I'm sure you've seen Kung Fu Panda, right? In part 2 or part 3, you have this uh, the buffalo, the villain that comes from the spirit world. The way how massive it looks and the power he and, has. And, and indestructible. It's, it's like a tank that is just moving towards you. It's like a tank. And when a woman sits on it, it's like. Where is she? She's just disappeared in it. Again, so unnecessary. I, not a bull, but a goat. <laughs> the chest is a goat. <laughs> but it's unnecessary. I mean, again, it's, it depends. Like there are. But some, it, it it looks like wow. It is, and for 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 how huge the bike is, it's so well balanced. I rode a friend's bike, and I was like, <laughs> where is the weight going? It's a heavy bike, but once it gets, it's like even if you're standing and trying to balance it, it balances out very very well. I then then mm. according to them, it's the whole point of the box. Boxes engine, mm-hmm. wherein the, it's, it's like holding a rod on a rope and walking. But the, mm-hmm. the engine helps, it's low and it, since it's spread out, it helps yes. manage the center of gravity really well. And again, for people who are looking at compensating for certain shortcomings in their body, this thing looks amazing. You would suddenly look like a bloody stud man. The GS is. Yeah, it's, it's, but it's, it's not for regular people. 
it, it like we said people who put their life savings probably not so much because it is expensive parts are expensive yeah, though yeah. it's a reliable machine but yeah. yes again parts are expensive to maintain unlike honda or, or triumph or even kawasaki but again, some there, level. but again these parts there are periodical yeah uh, so the thing is before you buy a bike any atv you got to ask the sales guy okay help me with the periodical maintenance like Do kawasaki ha kawasaki tells you every 60 30000 kilometers ye kharcha rahega hi However, how do you maintain your bike? You have to change it. BMW, Honda, everyone has that. So then you actually calculate. You're buying it for 25 lakhs, and how many lakhs will it will it cost you to maintain it for the next five years, ten years, fifteen years, whatever you're looking at? So do your research accordingly. Uh, I mean, again, I miss those two-stroke ADVs, which again for us it was just the uh, enduro TV enduro which had come. But uh, talking about my Yamaha, I have to. I've spent zero in the last seven years on the engine. I had completely over overhaul the engine. These engines are so bloody simple. You, I've literally spent nothing on the engine. I've just maintained it once a year. It is that simple. But these four-stroke engines, you have to maintain it periodically, and you have these high compression engines. Everything is just perfectly synced to produce 140 horsepower on like four inch of rear turbo and two inch of front turbo, right? So that's how it is. So. we'll put this topic here and we'll be coming up with more such topics stay tuned at custom elements and all about automobiles and we are hoping that ktm comes up with their adventures cuz i'm really looking forward to it which adventure uh, the 890 uh, if if it's if it if it comes the ktm had got the 690 or 790 right the 690 790 it was a complete disaster for ktm i'm pretty sure they're not going to get a bike unless they're manufacturing it over here let's see fingers crossed but that was like you were getting it at half the rate After at the this, end of the period when there was a transition from bs4 to bs6 that was that was my I have friends who bought it at 10 lakhs and then my friends who bought it at 6.8 i know it was like uh, painful but it's, it it looks like a proper built up 390 uh, but again uh, yeah i mean let's uh, if people like this video we should do more of this so stay tuned and if you have any kind of queries we'll be posting this video on both the channels so yes. if you have anything you can ask rustam here or you can ask us or me and we will get back to you and stay tuned for we have a lot more interesting topics and hopefully our budget goes a little up so we can keep a little more things to probably munch or drink in the videos yeah Sponsors, sponsors. See you soon. <laughs> okay. See you. Ciao.